after the devastating explosion that occurred on April 26, 1986. The world was completely changed after that. From both humans to wildlife, these are the awful side effects that happened after that unforgettable day. Even outside of the exclusion zone, farmers are seeing the side effects on their livestock. Even with low levels of radiation outside the area, there are animals that are being affected by this disaster. Immediately following after the explosion, between the years of 1989 and 1990, farmers reported the strange abnormalities appearing on their farms. In 1990 alone, there were about 400 reports being created on this, and with some of these deformities being so bad, the majority of the animals did not make it past a few hours. There were two photos that I was able to find online, which one you've probably already seen before. The first one is of a foal, and based on this photo, did not have a good first couple of hours. Its legs are curved inward at the hooves, and the area where the limbs are supposed to bend are completely meshed together. The other one discovered that of a small piglet. It is a bit more severe. This creature was found on a farm not too far from the site, and from far away it kind of looks like an eerie mutated blob with a head. Its limbs are completely morphed together, and even showcasing it had more than the usual four. Although articles aren't showing us these side effects of the radiation, it still very much existed. The online world has given these pooches a new name, the radioactive hounds. We also have an update as of recently that these puppies might not be mutating after all, and rather their issues might be because of us. For a quick rundown, when the explosion in Chernobyl happened, many people needed to evacuate quickly because of all the radiation radiation that was being spilled into the air. But this also resulted in a lot of people leaving their pets behind. They were exposed to a lot of radiation, and as they kept creating new generations of puppies, the radiation traveled down their lineage even while the radiation in the environment was meeting its half-life expectancy. There was something odd though. Scientists studied the dogs within the zone and dogs that were 10 miles out and noticed that they were extremely genetically different. But when looked within their genome, they found no radioactive active abnormalities. What they're thinking right now is that extreme selective pressure kicked in once the explosion happened. And not only that, with the cleaning crew bringing in a bunch of outside materials such as heavy metals, lead powder, pesticides, etc., it didn't help their case at all, and instead forced themselves to focus on quickly breeding with other dogs around them. They still have radiation though, just not in their genome. Did you know Chernobyl wolves might just be able to solve cancer for us? Obviously not in this lifetime, but an extreme extraordinary discovery about these canines is that they've developed a protective mutation of some kind. These guys have been exposed to a lot of radiation, and when they measured just how much they've been exposed to, it leveled to 11.28 millirems of radiation daily. The wolves are taken in over six times the amount that is considered safe for humans. Similar to cancer patients that have their immune systems being altered, the same thing is happening to these wolves. The goal is to study these animals more and see what information they can offer us in proceedings with the next steps for patients. With the state of the world right now though, that's been put on a hard pause. But in the meantime, we are also seeing these wolves start to migrate outward as their juvenile young seek their own packs. This can be considered bad, because the last thing we want is that these radioactive wolves to start intermingling with other creatures that are not carrying these mutated genes. Thankfully in Chernobyl there's a group spaying the dogs, but that's a little harder to do with wild wolves. The birds of Chernobyl are another species that haven't been able to keep up with the mutated changes. In fact, the barn swallows and Paris major species have not been doing good at all. As their generation travels down the line, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Some of the side effects that these birds have been going through were horrible incorrections within their nervous system development, suffering with cataracts, and even a decrease in brain size. When they were comparing new generations to the ones prior, they discovered a 5% drop in brain size, even with visual changes on the outside when they noticed how small their heads had become in comparison to their bodies. Depending on the species, some birds have higher antioxidants, which serves as a barrier of sorts when it comes to radiation. The feel melanin within their feathers are much higher, making them much more adaptable to the harsh changes around them. Melanin for some reason has been the saving grace for a lot of animals. Let's not forget the mice and rats of Chernobyl, the overlooked species that have gone through some fascinating changes. When researchers went back to see what was happening to the animals, they noticed that some of the rodents 
living there not only survived the explosion, but were somehow thriving in it. One scientist noted that they went through evolutionary change that normally would have taken them about 10 million years to go through. Although they look fairly normal on the outside, radiation causes a lot of issues when it comes to the DNA. And if some of them aren't naturally healed over time, you're left with mutations. And these guys have many breaks within their DNA strands. They prove this by comparing mice from outside the area and the ones from within. And the kicker was that they were showing intense genetic differences from one another, similar to a comparison between a mouse and a rat. Mice and rats diverged from each other around 15 million years ago. So for an explosion to quickly just split the genetic differences of two of the same mice species just like that, it's absolutely insane. Although this article was posted in 1995, they like to say that they're thriving easily. Hopefully they bring this topic up again in our time. Let's dive on into the dirt this time and see what's been happening with the worms of Chernobyl. And apparently, from my understanding, they are probably the cleanest, untouched organism when the explosion happened. When scientists went to collect 300 of these nematodes and study them, they discovered there was no radiation damage whatsoever. How is that possible? One theory is because they are apparently incredibly hardy creatures, with some species being unfrozen and alive after being locked in permafrost for thousands of years. The interesting thing with these worms in comparison to other animals, there was no major genetic differences between them and worms from the outside. Their DNA had not been manipulated, whereas with the dogs, there were drastic differences between them and domesticated dogs further out. What is odd though is that over time, radiation does begin to sink into the ground once it settles, and eventually kind of just goes away little by little. So for these guys to not be affected is remarkable, and brings a new insight for scientists to see how some people are more resilient against harmful disorders and diseases. A lot of people tend to forget that aside from animals and people, even food became contaminated from the explosion. There were farms and ranches around the area at the time, and while there were some clear visual changes in some of the animals that lived on these farms, not many people really took the time to look at the fruits and vegetables. Apparently right after the explosion happened, the need for all things organic skyrocketed, and the United States was accidentally importing goods that were contaminated with radiation. On this list included juices, cheese, pasta, mushroom, hazelnuts, figs, and a whole bunch of other stuff. From Belarus, 7 to 8 percent of the milk being produced there, as well as 13 to 16 percent from food products, they found traces of cesium-137 in these things that exceeded the limit of human consumption. That's terrifying to realize that some people, especially outside of Europe, were accidentally consuming radiation. A lot of people, especially in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia, began to show signs of radiation consumption. And considering the fact that C-137 has a half-life expectancy of 30 years, this is going to be a problem for a while. Despite the rumors going around that the explosion caused the frogs to turn a darker color, it actually has nothing to do with the radiation. Although it would have been a cool thought, it actually has everything to do with what they're already born with. Black frogs were already a minority in Chernobyl before the explosion even happened. But because of the levels of melanin that they have, it acted almost like a protective shield of some kind. They are still radioactive to a degree, but the level of mutation in their DNA is strikingly little to none. One researcher stated, melanin is known to protect against radiation because it can mechanically avoid the production of free radicals, which are unstable atoms that can damage cells caused by the direct impact of the radioactive particles on cells. Radiation can induce oxidative stress and damage essential structures for life such as the membrane of cells or even DNA. This was also seen in the birds that had higher levels of pheomelanin within their feathers. They were able to handle being in the exclusion zone a lot better. As you further walk into Chernobyl, you'll see the deeper you get, the darker the frogs become. Where the lighter green frogs take to the outskirts, the darker colored amphibians run the exclusion zone. Do you have any interesting facts from Chernobyl? Let me know down below and I will see you all in the next video.